Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about something that I know nothing about, but you might find really cool. It's film photography in 2021. So in my world of sports photography, it's all about speed, right? We need to know what we have, we need to know what we shot right away, and be able to get it out to people in real time as they're following along with whatever sporting event it is that they're watching. And obviously the tools, the mechanism to do this is digital photography, DSLRs, mirrorless, wherever you're at with that. Digital photography is the dominant medium to do this. But there's still a big market, even in 2021, and a lot of interest in film photography. Now, film photography is not something I know a ton about. I did get started on film photography. I learned in high school and college the basics of photography in the dark room, and I think that was a really valuable experience, but I don't know much about it, but I'm excited to bring in a few guests today that really are active within the film community and know a lot about the market of film photography. So we're gonna jump into a Zoom video interview with a couple friends of mine who are very active and knowledgeable within the film community or on the business side of the film photography industry. Now everyone you see here has been or is currently still in the family of my great friends over at Hunt's Photo and Video, their New England's top photo and video retailer, and also can help you out with anything that you need related to film photography if that's something you're interested in. So anything from film and cameras lenses to printing services and any sort of development they've got you covered any step of the process so definitely suggest you check them out and today on the zoom we're going to have three guests we've got noah buchanan who's the outside sales developer at hunts photo and video david kinchin who is a film photographer based out in la and arturo camacho who's on the adjunct faculty at university of maine's intermediate program guys thank you so much for getting on the channel Let's jump into it. Yeah, thanks yeah. for having us. Thanks so I'm us. really excited to have you guys specifically on this call because I don't really do anything with film, admittedly. You know, I learned in high school, I learned the basics in high school in the dark room. But since then, like in my professional work, I don't use film at all. But I know it's a really big part of the market these days and you guys all have kind of unique experience that you can speak to when it comes to, to film. So I'm excited to have you on. And I think Noah, maybe maybe let's start with you um, just because you're kind of on the business side of photography and specifically as it, as it relates to film. What does that look like in 2021 right now? What does the business landscape look like for film photography? And is there a lot of demand even in this you know digital world that we're in? Really with us, film production as far as processing, printing, um, film sales in general are just kind of skyrocketing right now for us. Um, so much so that we've bought pro more processing machines over the past several months to keep up with the demand of film processing. Uh, we currently have two stores right now processing film on pretty much a daily basis uh, to keep up with the demand. And uh, film sales are really through the roof. Um, we're selling so much film now um, not just to um, people doing photography professionally, but really a lot of hobbyists and even younger people too. Even things like the Fuji Instax mini cameras, um, kind of the new generation of Polaroid cameras have become really popular even with younger kids, um, just because you get that instant gratification. So for us, film has been really popular um, and the sales are keep going up and up. Um, as far as a professional standpoint, I don't see it being as popular as digital is. Um, I don't think it'll ever kind of replace digital by any means. But there are definitely still people making a living from film photography, doing portraiture, wedding, even landscape photography, um, and doing it really a little bit more exclusive. Overall, film business has been really good for us over at Hunts. In a world when it's so easy to take the perfect photo with a digital camera and you can review everything you're doing or even your cell phone, why do you think younger generations are kind of now flocking back to this old kind of more imperfect medium. It is funny, uh, you know, I, I've found that when I'm talking to a lot of older photographers, they're like, you know, they spent their whole lives shooting film and dealing with the limitations of that. And once they were able to switch over to digital, they were like, forget it, never going back. I never want to touch film again. You know, I'm 100% digital now. And then the younger people who grew up with digital cameras are kind of, uh, 
you know, reaching the outer limits of the digital world that they grew up in um, with, you know, sensors and what you can do uh, with, with digital. And they're looking, um, you know, for something different. And so they're going back to film. It's more about um, the process and the challenge. I think uh, people who are shooting film are, are uh, looking for a challenge in a way, um, a challenge for themselves in a way that digital doesn't really offer. Um, like the the people I work with, um, you know, will shoot digital and film side by side uh, as a in, a in a session, and you know they'll get two thousand digital photos and be able to pull maybe like ten good ones from those two thousand, and then they'll shoot two rolls of film and they'll still pull ten good ones out of the forty that they shot, but they just shot less. So I think it's more about you as a photographer, what you want. Do you want ease and flexibility do you want to slow down and challenge yourself the idea of artifacts and like materiality of like certain objects and like this relation to memory and nostalgia um and one of the really interesting things that i kind of been observing while teaching and also like with uh, with what i do research on is um the whole process of uh, having a physical object delivered to you in like as a reward so um a lot of the students that i see that are getting in involved into um film photography um they again they began with the the whole like instax cameras as not said with like disposables it's that whole process of like i don't know what i'm gonna get but it's so exciting to see it happening um and then you get this physical thing that is unique um so from that aspect i i, I see kind of the relation of like that psychological need of like i must get more of it i do see more and more stuff uh opening classes for like experimental photo methods uh like film photography um you know uh something that we call digital alchemy that is kind of like the combination of like digital photography with like uh, analog methods um so from that side i think that that whole rebirth because now we have more and more um updated tools um that you can use for film photography i think that's why it's also catching up like at least from the education side when i learned photography i learned the basics in the dark room i learned the basics of composition and lighting shutter speed exposure all that stuff on film and i still feel like even though you know a lot of uh careers now in photography are, are fully digital based i still think it's important to learn on that medium do, do you guys feel the the same way that it still has a place in in teaching the basics of photography and really learning in a tangible way well, definitely. When you pick up your camera, especially, for example, here when we teach a, a photography class, uh, we ask for students to have a fully manual camera. Um, and the list of specifications specification says uh, no auto, just the light. And we write needle light meter. That is the standard like selenium light meter. Um, that is because um, when you are, you know, dissecting the whole instrument of the camera to like its most basic instrument, um, you, it's easier for you to be able to explain like what's important about it because nowadays like you pick up a digital camera like i i mean myself like i have a i have a nikon da50 and i still don't know like 100 percent what all the menus do whereas like in, in, a, in a film camera like i know it doesn't matter what brand it is i can pick it up and i can tell you i can start using it right away no problem um the other thing is just patience uh which is i think it's really important especially as a photographer um in any field like either if it's like you know sports if it's wedding if it's uh wildlife like if there's a lot of patience into that um and uh also what we call like shot economy so you know how many as david was mentioned you know they will, they will have to have like photographers that take like two thousand three thousand shots in a session film kind of like predetermines that for you because you have like you know 12 shots 36 shots uh, 24 shots and uh, you have to make the best out of them so I think it helps the students slow down before they kind of like jump at it. The educational realm is one thing and then there's the professional realm and David I'm wondering if you could maybe speak to that you're out in LA I mean it probably seems like more and more you know high-end commercial clients advertising photographers that there's more and more of a demand for film photography even as kind of a you know a high-end or kind of a fashionable medium to, to show whatever they're trying to shoot. Is that something that yeah. you're seeing more of? And, and, you know, working with clients, is that something that is being asked of photographers? On the, the high level of, you know, like fashion and, uh, you know, um, kind of this product, high quality photography, um, 
there's kind of two types of film shooting uh, people that I've, I've run into. There's uh, people who are exactly like you're saying, you know, they're, they've been shooting digital their whole career and they're looking for a way to kind of, you know, get a different look. Um, and so, you know, with the analog process, you can do certain things that look a little more authentic, like different treatments, different methods. Um, so film and analog will often and help uh, people do that and they'll often kind of shoot side by side uh, so that they have the clean digital images but then they also have some with like light leaks on them or you know I've seen people like bake their film which kind of like hazes it up and stuff like that uh, so there's there's that aspect where there's you know people who have a clean look looking for an edge um, and then there's also people who never stop shooting film uh, they you know are older in the industry they were shooting on, you know, Hasselblads and RZ67s and Pentax uh, medium format cameras at the kind of you know height of that. And there's cameras out there in the film world that can outperform, you know, even A7R3s and R4s now we're up to, like, you know, all these high megapixel cameras that cost thousands and thousands of dollars. If you put a roll of film through a Pentax 6.7, I think you'll still get higher quality because uh, you're recording onto a bigger medium. Even some of the world's like biggest brands are going to, to this look because it is kind of a, a different look and kind of a more style, stylized feel to you know whatever yeah. they're trying to. You'd be surprised you know, how many brands still shoot film. A lot of uh, movies too, too are still shot on film even though they're digitally treated and everything. There's, the highest level still holds film very, very high regard. Uh, even if at the consumer level, we've seen you know dips and dives. Uh, Panavision and uh, Kodak have been making films that are still performing. Like the Avengers film was shot on film. How accessible is the equipment, the gear? Um, I, I feel like 15 years ago when I was in high school dating myself, like it was super cheap you could go to a store find a film camera a basic film camera for like 50 bucks is that still kind of how it is or is it a little bit more of a premium now to kind of get into the market it definitely is a bit more of a premium just because there's much more demands and the the cameras themselves are not being made anymore so really it's hard to come by them nowadays uh yes there are so many out there but the demand is so much higher so it's becoming fewer and fewer so we are see, starting to see prices go up on film cameras old vintage lenses um, anything related to film right now is really just kind of going through the roof in terms of price and a lot of companies are starting to discontinue some of these film stocks too um, like Fuji just continued Pro 400H uh, which was a super popular film stock and pretty much once they announced it was discontinued it was sold out everywhere and people were selling it for three times the price on yeah. eBay and people were buying it um, so it is really crazy that the demand is uh, still there um, and the demand is far exceeding the supply of film and of cameras. Um, there are film cameras now that are selling for the same price, if not more than when they were brand new. Um, they're selling for more than you could buy them new 20, 30 years ago, um, if not longer. And they're a lot older. They've seen a ton of use, but the demand is just so high that people are willing to pay crazy amounts of money. Um, I have a Leica M6, which I guess would be considered like a cult camera in, in terms of the film photography world. It's kind of probably one of the more pr uh, premier pr um, sought after rangefinder film cameras. And I bought that over five, almost five years ago now for around a thousand dollars. And now they're selling for upwards of two thousand to three thousand dollars. A lot of celebrities and stuff are using these high-end point-and-shoot cameras and film cameras, and people see them and they want to get one for themselves, and that's increasing the price. So, yeah, pricing on film stuff is kind of through the roof right now. Um, if you can find a working film camera for under a hundred bucks with a lens, I'd say grab it. Um, it's hard. It's hard to come by um, to find something with a lens for under a hundred dollars, unless it's like a, a cheap point-and-shoot. But to have an SLR with an interchangeable lens, um, yeah, maybe five, 10 years ago, you could find something for under $100, 50 bucks. Um, but that's becoming much fewer and far between now just because of that demand. Uh, film cameras don't last very long when we take them in. Uh, they turn around very quickly because we have people coming in on a regular basis looking for them and paying a premium for them. Um, so if you can find something for a good price and good condition, um, I would jump on it. 
and it's not something where you have to worry about losing your money. I don't think the price of these cameras is going to drop anytime soon. Really if anything, it. it's an investment. Um, and it's a way that you can know, okay, if you decide to get out of it a couple of years down the road, you're going to make that money back that you spent on that camera, if not more. The trick is to develop it yourself. Yeah, well, and that's the other thing. So uh, a lot of, uh, and you see the wave coming because you see like, uh, you see people starting to invest more on processing units. And you see like people developing like open source processing units. Um, and you see these machines going for like two thousand, three thousand dollars, and at the end you look at the price and you're like, well, you know, I'm dropping like a hundred, two hundred dollars per like session. Might as well, oh, might as well go for it. Um, the other like, but like coming off from like Noah's point, uh, yeah, like they're becoming harder to find, um, which has also opened a lot of uh, opportunities for like camera makers. Um, so, for example, I don't know if you guys remember the Holga cameras. Mm -hmm. Like the old plastic cheap they're a piece of junk they used to be 15 bucks and now you go on ebay and you you have to pay like 40 50 dollars not because they're great cameras but because they're a great base for making a camera oh. um so you see a lot of people buying in, and there's this whole community you can look for holga mods uh they buy in larger lenses and uh, like expensive like nikon larger lenses or like size and larger lenses that you pick up for like 50 bucks and make a decent medium format camera. <laughs> um, 3D printing has also like taken a, a yeah. like a huge aspect. Like when you needed parts for cameras, like no one knows that I, I take crap apart and put it back together. Um, but being able to make parts also like has changed a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, and also like being able to make a camera, there's like, uh, I think, which is the company that makes a fully 3D printed A by 10 and a CNC A by 10? Intrepid, yeah. Intrepid, yeah. So Intrepid, they just release like, uh, you can buy files for 3D printed cameras or buy a, a CNC made A by 10. And uh, yeah. its budget is 300 bucks and it works. So yeah, there's a, uh, life finds a way, I guess. And I'm curious to hear your guys' takes also. You, you guys are, are avid followers of film photographers. Um, I am not, so I'm curious if you could each, you know, recommend one or two photographers who are doing really great work on film that, that people who are watching this should should check out. I recommend this photographer every single time because he's, uh, he's still alive, he's teaching. Uh, so you can check out uh, Gregory Kurtzen. Um, he does like a um, huge uh, large format, um, both like sets and photography. He's teaching at Columbia, if I'm not mistaken. Um, another great photographer to follow. I know he's he moved on to um, to documentary, but uh, his name is Steve Lees. He did a lot for Life magazine, um, so he had a lot of like portraits on commission. Um, I really like his work. Uh, he did a really big project in uh, in the prison system down in Texas for uh, juvenile. Mm -hmm. um, that was, I think, a big part of it was shot on film, um, which is it's, it's an amazing project. You can check it out. The ones that I would mention are kind of the film centric ones, um, who kind of it's it's baked into their style and their identity. Um, one of my favorite portrait photographers is uh, Ryan Muirhead. He does a really good job of balancing, um, you know, portraiture with the emotional aspects of uh, humanity and relationships. Um, he can really uh, kind of bake a mood and a feeling and an emotion into a portrait, which I think is just really hard to do. Um, and it's, you can look at his work and even without knowing much about film, you can kind of feel the analog method that he uses. Um, so he's one of my favorites, uh, Kellyanne Bob. Um, she's a four by five uh, photographer, does kind of um, more portraiture type stuff that's different. Um, a little bit less like commercial and fashiony, and more uh, kind of uh, again like uh, got kind of an edge to it, I guess. And then uh, Joe Greer is one of my favorite ones as well. He's kind of a street photographer in New York. Um, he travels a lot and just kind of simple stuff that works really well. Um, he shoots with an M6, kind of like Noah, so he's kind of a, a brand ambassador for for that stuff. Uh, but. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan of his work. For me, uh, one of my favorite photographers actually going back even to the skateboarding days is uh, Jason Lee. Uh, and he was actually an actor and a producer, a writer. He does, he's a very 
a multi-talented person. Uh, he was in the TV show, My Name is Earl. He was kind of the main character in that. So you may know him from that or other movies that he's been in, uh, but he's actually a very well-respected film photographer as well. Uh, and does a lot of different books, which is really something that I like. Uh, photographers who get their work printed and compiled into a book. Um, he actually has a new one coming out about Galveston, Texas, which was one of where one of the worst hurricanes in the US was yeah. probably 10 or 15 years ago where the whole town was pretty much flooded and they almost lost the whole entire town. So he did a series kind of documenting that and uh, I'm really excited about that book. He did another series of rural towns in Southeastern America. Um, so his work is really awesome, all on film. Um, but also a very talented actor and a producer as well. And then another person that I really like who also has a YouTube channel, um, Nico Carver is his name. Uh, he's based out of California, uh, does a lot of large format and medium format shooting, uh, a lot more landscape and documentary style photography, but also a lot of education as well on his channel. Uh, he has this series called uh, Camera Drinks with a Camera or something like that, where he sits down with a, drip, a different drink and pairs it with a camera and talks about the drink and talks about the camera. So it's kind of <laughs> fun um but his work is really awesome as well and i guess to kind of close this out since you know since this is all in the hunts family noah maybe you could just kind of talk about um you know this, the different services that hunts offers related to film photography printing developing um what do you guys offer and and what can people kind of go to you to 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 get out of Sure, yeah. So at Hunts, we pretty much sell everything you need. Um, again, cameras and lenses and that kind of stuff, it's kind of come and go. Uh, it's what we have ever we have used at the moment, uh, but we have stuff coming and going on a very regular basis. So even if we don't have something in one of the specific stores that you may be at, they can call around and try to locate something from one of our other stores. Um, and we have stuff coming in on a regular basis. We have waiting lists sometimes if people are looking for a specific camera or a specific lens. Uh, we sell film and everything you need to develop it yourself at home. So if you want to develop black and white at home for yourself, we have all the chemicals and everything in the, the trays, all of that fun stuff to develop it from home. Uh, if you want to have it processed with us, we process all the film. We can print it for you. We can scan it onto a hard drive for you. Um, we can pretty much do everything you need in relating to film photography from actually getting the camera and the equipment to processing it, to printing it um, and getting that final product. So no matter what you're looking for, uh, if you're just getting into film and need to get a camera or you've been shooting it for a while and need a new place to get it processed or a new source to actually get your film from, uh, you can reach out to me via email. Uh, all my contact will be probably be down in the description of the video. Um, and I'd be more than happy to help anybody out if they're looking to get into film photography or have any questions about it. Something that I'm always really excited to talk about um, and help anybody out in any way that I can. Awesome. Well, you guys heard it here from the experts, uh, David, Arturo, Noah. I super appreciate you guys coming on the channel, dropping some knowledge. I learned a ton. I hope you guys did too. And we will drop your contact info down in the description so you guys can make sure to check out and follow all these guys um, on social. So thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate it. I'll talk to you soon. Awesome. Thanks, Billy. Thank thanks, everybody. Yeah, thanks. Bye -bye. So they have it. Pretty cool to see how it is still a major player in the photography landscape, even in 2021, going into 2022. If you're looking for holiday gifts, maybe you want to treat yourself or treat somebody that you know. Film photography, supplies, equipment, developing might be a great option for you. And if you're interested, make sure you do go check out my friends at Hunts. They've got it hooked up for anything you need. I've got Noah's contact info down here below, as well as the contact info for David and Arturo. All three of them are open and willing to talk to you about any sort of questions or comments you have related to film photography. So I definitely suggest you take advantage and hit them up if you've got something that's on your mind. I appreciate you guys following along. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and we will see you at the next one.